All right, hello people and welcome back to a new video where today we're going to be talking about how you can farm more efficiently within layers two, three and beyond that. So pretty much I've already done a video going through how to get some Dark Seal chest the quickest, which is going straight into layer one, non insanity zone, most safest zone out of a lot of them and literally just speed through them, get as many chests as you can and go about the islands. However, I found out recently that it's much more efficient to go into the further layers of the Dark Sea, and here is why. The reason why it's so efficient to go further into the Dark Sea is because of the higher quantity of chests, the higher quantity of more rare chests, and the higher quantity of Dark Seal chests, as well as the potential chance to get Atlantean Essences from the Atlantean Briggs and the Atlantean Catches, and also the chance to get Siren Gear. Now, obviously, Siren Gear isn't very good, but if you go for the Siren Bow, it is brilliant. The Siren Bow is really strong. Pretty much, when you go into the Dark Sea, you will want to be using a very strong boat. Now, yes, you can go for a speed boat if you don't want to fight against the Atlantean ships. If you don't have that much confidence in fighting the Atlantean ships, then you can just speed away. However, you will have a very low amount of health or a little bit less stability than you'd want. So I would personally recommend going for a build like this. Now, high amount of durability, 100% stability, decent turning, high amount of ram strength. We've got ram defense, magic storage. We've got a decent amount of resilience and a decent amount of speed. Now, the set that I go for for going into layer two is Ruined Warship Archaic Hull. It gives a massive amount of armor. Massive amount of stability, you get a decent amount of turning speed, some more ram strength, and a lot of ram defense. Even though you have the minus speed, now the minus speed doesn't really matter as much in terms of safety wise, because you can still outrun the Atlantean ships, just make sure that you damage them a bit and then you can easily outrun them. Your ship will always most likely be the strongest ship out of the two, so it'll be fine. So pretty much the reason why you'd want to use both of these is just based on the fact that they not only give you some really good stats, but they also allow you to do different things on the brig, such as using cargo to then repair your ship automatically. Next up, we'll go over the different weapons. So pretty much I go for brisk dragonfire carronades. They reload a lot quicker and they still have decent damage, still have a good fuse length and still have a decent amount of range. Obviously, you want to be up close to the boats if you're using these because they do a lot more damage up close. Now, in terms of the mortar, I do go for an enhanced ruined archaic mortar because explosive, which you'll look at here, has a lot larger of a spread multiplier, which isn't particularly good. If the boat is moving quick, then yes, that is good because then you have more of an area that you could potentially hit the brig. But obviously, if you want to be going for something better, you'd go for range because then you can hit them from a further distance, stay at a safer distance, and then bang, just do some extra damage. Obviously, you've got all of your random attachments that you could do whatever with, doesn't really matter much. And then you've got your archaic sailcloth. Now, archaic is the best sailcloth, definitely go for that. In terms of the actual enchantment, I definitely recommend going for brisk. If you want to go for a more tankier version, you go for reinforced because that gives more resilience but personally i like to go for brisk just for that large extra speed over this however if you do really want to go for speed you go for this warship sailcloth all right so let's actually go over a specific build that you can use for this now pretty much when you want to go into the dark sea you want to be having some warding, either through warding potions or through warding on your gear. This is because the different effects that you get from Insanity can be very, very distracting, especially when you get into Insanity 3. So I would highly recommend using Virtuous gear. Obviously, at the moment, I have Virtuous on my gear, but also have the Insanity on my gear. So it is very mixed. <laughs> but obviously, I've got the just cloak which gives me that extra plus one uh, warding which keeps me safe from all the effects that would occur if I was to remove all the virtuous. 
So pretty much this build focuses on mixing together all different types of stat. So you've got a lot of attack speed, a lot of power, you've got a decent amount of defense, you've got a decent amount of agility, decent attack size, intensity don't really matter. And so this build is pretty good. But in terms of weapons, weapons, you will want to be using ranged weapons or any sort of weapon that has a ranged ability. Now, I prefer going for bows because I could still use the M1 as a berserker and sirens are very painful to deal with when you're a berserker because the only ranged attacks I have is axe slash and shot. Now, shot doesn't have a very large range and axe slash does have a large range, but it's hard to hit. So definitely go with a bow. Obviously, if you can get yourself a siren bow, that's incredible. Get your hands on one as soon as possible because it is honestly one of the best. Now, in terms of other different things that you could bring with you to the Dark Sea, obviously you can bring with Fishing Rod. Graced is one of the best. Graced is always going to be one of the best because the increased luck means you have a lot more of a chance to get your rare fish. For potions, definitely bring warding along with you. As long as you've got a few warding potions on you, you will have the lessened effects, or you will just completely remove the effects of insanity. Make sure to have some luck potions with you, so when you get your sealed chest and you open them, you will be able to get the best possible rewards out of them. Clear sight is just an additional one that you can bring along, because obviously if you want to be able to see more clearly in the Dark Sea, bring these along. And then finally, bring along healing elixirs, but that is potions. You obviously can bring any other potions along with you that you feel necessary. Invisibility potions are incredibly good because they keep you away from the Atlanteans and from the Sirens. So if you don't want to fight them, you could just invis, go into the different areas and then just rob the chest. They won't notice and you can get out of them. Now, in terms of food, I would definitely recommend bringing along a large amount of food However, obviously you can go for this type of food. Now this obviously is a ridiculous amount of hunger. You will never go hungry again. And the recovery for lasts for three hours and three minutes. So you're gonna have an entire expedition worth of recovery. Let's actually go over the dangers of Dark Sea past layer one. Now, obviously you do have the Atlantean Briggs. I've had many run-ins with them and I have actually started being able to defeat the Atlantean Briggs with this boat based on the fact that I've got really strong weapons and also a lot of defense. But Atlantean Briggs can overwhelm you and there is possibility that multiple will spawn at once so just be careful of them and also they do not stop following you unless you go out of the Dark Sea so be very wary. Another really dangerous thing out in the Dark Sea is water poisoning. Now, water poisoning will only affect you past layer one, so make sure that you are either able to break a hole into a wall or able to get undercover so that you can get rid of the water poisoning, or stay near your brig or park your brig near where you are to make sure that you can go and bathe so that you don't have as bad of an effect. And finally, let's obviously talk about the Atlanteans and the Sirens, the actual main priorities in the Dark Sea. So, Atlanteans past layer 1 can become mutant Atlanteans that are over level 125. This is over your level cap, which is very dangerous to deal with because they do a lot of damage. So either bring a party along with you so that you can deal with them more efficiently, or just keep at range and do not attempt to start fighting them like a berserker would, because obviously if you start trying to dash into them, you are going to most likely get grabbed, which is not a good thing. I've had that happen multiple times and they can deal like 200 damage per hit. So it's just, it is not a good move. And then the Sirens, obviously they too can also overwhelm you. The further you go into the Dark Sea, the more Sirens will spawn. You can have up to, I think a max of over 10 uh, Sirens on one island, which is obviously not good. <laughs> But that's up very far into the Dark Sea. Normally you'll only find three. So I would definitely recommend taking them on, but do be wary. They, they will overwhelm you if you're not prepared. And if you can't really aim with the bow, I sometimes struggle.
So another thing that you need to take into consideration is when you're actually fighting the Atlanteans, you can obviously just completely avoid them. You don't actually have to fight them. I've said this multiple times in my previous videos. I know that it's a bit repetitive, but it is true. You don't need to fight them. You can literally just hop up, either use an invis potion and hide, or you can just jump above them and walk around on top of them and they just will not recognize you're there unless obviously you decide to take a little peek over a little bit too far of an edge and they just spot you. So make sure you're staying safe out there, get as many chests as you can and I will see you in the next video. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff if you enjoyed this video. Drop a comment down below, make sure that you tell me what you want to see next because I'll always be here to take suggestions. And yeah, that's all from me. Hope this was informative and I'll see you in a bit.